<laughs> How you doing, B? I love you. Well, I... Lean well, here. Hi, y'all. This my buddy. Uh, my buddy. I love you. If I, don't, if I don't love you, God's a possum. That's what I'm telling you. Uh, hi, Bill. Hey, Larry. Good to see you, bud. Now, it is a, a kind of a new song. The brothers and I made, made a little album, did a little album. Uh, can I have a, uh, may I have a stand? Because I'm going sit, to sit down if I could. Y'all, uh, my dear friend Jimmy Dean, if I know anything about uh, working a crowd of people, I learned a lot of it from Jimmy Dean. You know, he went to the other side of the big river not long ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but if I know anything about writing songs... I, the, the privilege, you know, when Dottie brought me here and Gene and met all these wonderful people, but meeting Roger Miller was, was a high point in my life as far as a songwriter. And I spent a lot of time with him the last few years of his life. And uh, he had a little game he'd play with me, and I'll, I'll get to the song in a minute. We all know he was nuttier than a fruitcake, but it was brilliant nuts. You know, he, he was just nutty brilliant. He, he'd say, uh, he'd, he'd sing the first line of a song, and then he'd just look at me and see if I could come up with something. You know, that's just the way he was. So, so one night he said, Don't fall in love with anyone from Cleveland if they've been known to have strong family ties. And he looked at me and said, If the doctor says you got a week to live, go live in Cleveland. It'll seem like a year before you die. <laughs> <laughs> so one night we were in, uh, we in Tosuki, New Mexico, his home out there in Santa Fe. And we were sitting around, and it was either very early or very late, according to how you look at it, you know. And we were, you know, singing some tunes, and he, he left the den, and he went into his bedroom, and he came back, and he had a shoebox. Now, I know it doesn't sound like much, but he opened the shoebox, and there were pieces of paper and match, matchbooks and napkins and barf bags and menus. He pulled one little thing out, and it went, trailers for sale or rent. Dang me, dang me, they ought to take her open. He showed me a shoebox where he had all these ideas. Uh, that, I mean, the ones that had been big hits. And, uh, I, you know, I'm paralyzed about it right now. And uh, in a minute, he pulled one out that I didn't know, and he sang it for me, you know, like he used to do. And he said, he said I'm still here because my tears feel right at home in Salt Lake City. <laughs> and he just looked at me. And I said, and if I keep on crying, I'll have a Salt Lake all my own. Wow. And we never got to write it. So uh, when the boys and I got a chance with Mike Curb to do a, a new album, I wrote it for him. And Roger, you're going to get half credit, and Mary's going to get half the money. Salt Lake City is mighty pretty this time of year. Looking out over the lake You can almost see forever from here It's been two years Since she left me in tears I remember what she said back then She said I don't care If I ever see you are you talk again yeah. and I'm still here because my tears feel right home in Salt Lake City and if I keep on crying I'll have a Salt Lake on Gotta get out of this beautiful town Cause it only reminds me Of how happy we were When we called Utah home Salt Lake City is mighty this time of year Looking out over the snow-capped mountains You can almost see forever from here It's been two years since she left me in tears I remember 
what she said back then She said, I don't care If I ever see you or you talk again She said, I don't care If I ever see you Again. She said, I don't care if I ever see you or you talk again.